the rap game can get competitive. Just because you're signed to the same label as another artist or you move in the same social circles doesn't mean that you're automatically gonna be cool. Everybody wants to be the biggest artist in the world and when another rapper comes along and steals your shine, things can get heated. The most recent rap beef to make headlines is none other than the feud between Lil Baby's 4PF crew and the Migos. Let's take a look at what we know about the beef between these two groups. Both Migos and Lil Baby are signed to Quality Control Records, also known as just QC. QC was founded in March 2013 by Kevin Lee, also known as Coach K, and Pierre Thomas, or just P. Both men are respected names in Atlanta hip-hop and have close ties to Gucci Mane and other famous drill rappers from the city. Other artists signed to the label include Lil Yachty, The City Girls, Duke Deuce, and many more. Plus, Cardi B is signed to a management deal through QC, so the label has a small yet exclusive roster that includes some of the biggest names in hip-hop. The Migos were one of the first acts assigned to the label and for a long time, they were running the show. Migos were originally part of the 1017 family and Gucci was one of the first rappers in the industry to give him a co-sign. But after he went to prison, Gucci Mane into court, he wore handcuffs on his way out. A judge revoked a year of his probation, sending the rapper straight to the Fulton County Jail. Coach K and P stepped in to take the Migos under their wing. They released their debut single Versace under the label, which was followed up with a remix by Drake, and ever since then, the group has been dominating the charts. For a long time, the Migos were the stars of the label. With hit records like Bad and Bougie, Fight Night, Look at My Dab, and Motorsport, the Migos were on fire for almost half a decade. But every historic run eventually comes to an end at some point, and it seems like Migos are at the point in their career where fans are starting to get tired of their signature flow. Even though the Migos are still relevant, they aren't quite as hot as they once were. After receiving mixed feedback for the 2018 album Culture 2, the group decided to take a break and work on their own solo projects. While those albums did well commercially and had a few memorable moments, they didn't quite have the same vibe alone that they did when they were all together. They recently reunited for their fourth studio album, Culture 3, which debuted at number two on the Billboard charts, losing out to Polo G's Hall of Fame. The album sold the equivalent of 130,000 units in the first week, which is still good by today's standards, but it's the first album in the Culture trilogy to not debut at number one, showing that maybe taking the time off to work on solo projects was a mistake. Lil Baby, on the other hand, is on top of the world. He came into the game a little later than the Migos, but he's been steadily doing bigger and bigger numbers since being put on. He signed the QC in 2016 after getting out of jail for possession of marijuana with intent to sell. Baby grew up with Young Thug, who was also part of 1017 early on, and Thug introduced him to Gucci and the QC crew. Baby released his debut album in 2018, Harder Than Ever, which included a Drake feature on the track, Yes Indeed, and ever since, Baby has been on his way to taking over the rap game. He followed up with his second studio album, My Turn, in 2020, cementing himself as the leading voice on QC and taking the number one spot on the label from the Migos. Lil Baby then shocked everyone by releasing the single to Bigger Picture right after the George Floyd protest, which saw the rapper taking a more socially conscious stance with his music. The single was a huge success and proved that Baby was much more versatile than fans and critics thought he was. The song was so successful that he was even invited to the White House in May 2021 to meet with Vice President Kamala Harris and George Floyd's family on the anniversary of his death. Lil Baby just recently dropped a collaborative project with Lil Durk called Voice of the Heroes that did well both critically and commercially. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard charts and earned the equivalent of 150,000 album sales its first week, so it's easy to see why the Migos may be getting jealous of Lil Baby's success. His most recent album went number one and sold more units than them, even though he did get a boost from Lil Durk's fan base. He's also getting invites to the White House while being a respected rapper from the streets, which is rare. Although the Migos definitely aren't soft, they don't get the same kind of street cred that Lil Baby gets. They're from Gwinnett County, an area north of Atlanta, while Baby is from the Jonesboro Projects in the heart of the city. So Baby's not only making power moves and running up the charts, he's also well respected in the streets. Apparently, there's been tension between the Migos and Lil Baby from day one. Despite being two poppin' artists on the same label, they rarely collaborate, other than being featured together on the Quality Control compilation mixtape. When asked about Lil Baby in an interview with Hot 97's Peter Rosenberg in 2020, the Migos freeze up and get silent. In the interview, Rosenberg asks whether they're proud of Lil Baby for his track The Bigger Picture. After he asks the question, there's an awkward silence for a minute before Quavo just says, for show. Lil Baby dropped a, a, a great record last week. I, I was proud of him. I thought it was an awesome, topical record. Uh, have you been impressed and, and, and proud of his moves? He's been, he's been doing his thing, man. He's become the guy. The show. He then asked if they even heard the record, and Quavo just says, "Yeah." Did you hear? Did you hear the record I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. 
Rosenberg tries to redirect the conversation, but it's clear they aren't about to give Lil Baby any credit on camera. Up until recently, there wasn't any public beef between Baby and Amigos. They just seemed to move in their own separate ways. In an interview with The Breakfast Club, Lil Baby said that he and Amigos didn't have a relationship like that. He didn't say there was any beef, but they just did their own thing musically. Then, in March 2020, rumors started going around that Offset had been jumped by Lil Baby's 4PF goons outside the release party for his album My Turn. Witnesses who were allegedly at the party said they saw Offset get jumped, robbed, and stripped down to his boxers. A video also came out that supposedly showed the fight go down, although it's filmed from a car parked far from the action on the other side of a fence. The video does show some kind of altercation, and you can just barely hear Offset's name and other threats being made, but it's far from solid evidence. Several rumors were floating around as to why Offset and Baby may have had problems. One theory was that Offset ended up getting into it with some people, which resulted in Lil Baby almost getting robbed, even though he wasn't involved in the situation. Another theory was that Offset owed someone in Baby's camp 50 racks, but refused to pay, so they beat him up. Both Lil Baby and Offset denied this rumor. When the blog reported the story, Baby commented on the post, saying it's all cap. He also posted a slide to his Instagram story with the caption, Stop spreading fake news. That's fake. Please. Offset also posted a video on Instagram showing his face to flex that he didn't get scratched up. We're not really sure what to make of the whole thing, but the fact that neither side wants to talk about it is just kind of weird. The rumors died down after a while because it was the word of some random fans on the internet against the two people who were allegedly involved. So even with the videos as evidence, it isn't much of a beef if both rappers deny they have problems. But fans also noticed that Offset had unfollowed both Lil Baby and P on social media, suggesting that maybe there was more going on behind the scenes than fans knew. Later that year, the Migos shocked the rap community when they filed a lawsuit against QC for allegedly stealing millions of dollars from them. They actually sued their former attorney, Damian Granderson, who was also the lawyer for QC. In the suit, they claimed that he had charged them excessive fees and advised them to sign one-sided deals that favored the label, representing a serious conflict of interest. Even though the Migos were going after the lawyer, they were also indirectly taking shots at Coach K and P by suggesting they had taken advantage of him. This shocked their fans because up until that point, QC seemed like a real tight-knit operation that moved like a family, not just a business. This lawsuit shows that there was more trouble in paradise than the audience knew and the whole perception of the label began to shift. He put out a long statement denying that he mistreated any of his artists and let the world know that the label would continue to operate with full transparency and honest business practices. The group must have settled their differences in some way because they dropped a lawsuit just a few months later. In October 2020, Quavo posted a picture to Instagram of himself in front of the QC logo, fanning out stacks of cash with the caption, QC the label, money still on the table. So something must have happened to convince him that it was all a misunderstanding. But it still probably caused tensions within the label and those who are close to P and Coach K, like Lil Baby. Once the Migos were back on solid terms with their label, they announced the release of the fourth studio album, Culture 3. They started doing press runs and media appearances to build hype for the new project, which included a performance before the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight. The performance was pretty low energy, and the commentators spoke over them the entire time. Fans took to social media during the show to clown the group and produce a bunch of memes at their expense, but it was what happened afterward that made headlines. Not long after the performance, Baby posted a photo to IG with the caption, ain't nothing but a little bit of straightening. He deleted the post not long after, but many took this to mean that something had gone down involving Amigos. Straightening is the title of the lead single off Culture 3, so he was clearly referencing his label mates. Since they are rumored to already have beef, the post led fans to believe that another altercation had happened between the two crews. There wasn't much context to it, and this time, there weren't any witnesses to report what happened. But as more clues come to light, the more it seems like the beef between Baby and Migos is real and not just drama made up by fans. None of the rappers involved have addressed the comment, leading fans to jump to their own conclusions as to what happened. So, when Culture 3 dropped on June 11th, many believed that it contained disses directed at Lil Baby but the shots weren't coming from Offset, they would actually come from Takeoff, the group's quietest member. First, on the track Why Not, Takeoff raps, call him baby boy cause he got put in the headlock. This could have been a generic bar about any random rapper, but the fact that he said the word baby made fans think that he was dissing his label mate. There's a film called Baby Boy, which features a scene where one of the characters is put in the headlock and that's most likely the reference Takeoff is making. But it's possible it was a play on words and he was just trying to say that Baby tried to step to him and they had to show him who's boss. Or it could have just been a throwaway line that got misinterpreted because of the context. But the bar that really had fans thinking he was throwing shots at Baby was on the track Modern Day. 
On the song, Takeoff raps. If I got a plate, you know that he ate. I'm too blessed, so one thing I can't do is hate. I like what you're doing, just humble yourself. And know that we the ones who open the gate. Given the context, this bar could definitely be about Lil Baby. The Migos were popping before him, and the money that QC got to invest in Baby's career early on came from their success. He admits that he's not going to be a hater, but he does think that whoever he's talking to is doing too much and forgot who started the wave. Although the bar does seem to fit all the other rumors surrounding the Migos Lil Baby situation, it could also be about almost any other rapper in the game. There's no denying that the Migos are trendsetters, and a lot of rappers today have made a career off of what they started. He isn't all that specific, so he could be talking about Lil Baby or any other rapper he came up with who started acting extra after they got some clout. One thing's for sure, even if there is smoke, neither side will likely admit it. They may send sneak disses here and there or avoid promoting each other's albums, but they're on the same label at the end of the day and that kind of attention can only be bad for business. Even if the beef does help album sales, if Baby and Migos really did go to war, it means that someone's gonna lose their life or their respect in the game, which means that QC risks losing one of its major assets to the label. Overall, it doesn't seem like the beef goes that hard. In a competitive genre like rap, there's always gonna be tension over who's getting the attention at the moment and who's getting left out. Hopefully, they'll eventually put this behind them and move on, or at least continue to do their own thing and stay separated so it doesn't turn into anything serious.